uh, without any further ado, let's get started. And um, yeah, so Gianna, next slide, please. And let me just uh, admit everyone. So I wanted to start with introducing my um, happy hour team. And you see them here on the screen. So we have Kristen Keats. She is a board member of uh, our organization, Sustainable San Mateo County, and our happy hour liaison. And then we have Leanne Eberhardt. She's been volunteering a long time with uh, our organization. Gianna Bowie has been one of the longtime uh, happy hour team members. She actually started the happy hours with me. Then we have Alice Tian, she is our intern, and Megan uh, is also our intern and has already been uh, managing, uh, helping with some of the trivia questions on past happy hours. So um, yeah, so that's the team behind the happy hour. Next slide, please. So I did want to say a few words about Sustainable San Mateo County. Probably most of you already know the organization. Um, we are a local nonprofit, and our goal is to accelerate sustainability throughout the county. So we do like to have a system thinking approach on, in regard to sustainability, looking at the three E's. So social equity, environmental impact, and a green economy, because we believe all three need to um, really work hand in hand in order for us to achieve true sustainability. So I'm not going to take the time to go through our programs, but um, you can learn more if you go on our website, that's sustainablesanmateo.org. Suffice to say, so we do have some programs that look at uh, measuring and tracking sustainability performance. So that's, for example, our indicators report and also our, our soon to be released dashboard project. And then we also like to link this with offering solutions, sustainability solutions that can be implemented by local government and businesses. So that's the Sustainability Ideas Bank. And, um, you know, we also like to celebrate our sustainability heroes and champions. So I'm going to talk about our sustainability awards a little bit more in a few minutes. And last but not least, of course, we advocate for any policy and or uh, solutions that is in sync with our, um, with our uh, mission and vision. So for example, we've been supporting the local reach codes, which are stronger um, building codes to basically um, encourage electrification of buildings, but also transportation, EVs. And then, I mean, of course, we also like to, to support initiatives that reduce waste. Next slide, please. Let me just, yeah, so I was, um, men I, I mentioned the award ceremony, so please all mark your calendars. So that's going to happen on Friday, May 14th. We start at 5.30, it's a one hour program. And you can learn more and register. There is a link here at the bottom of the slide. Um, and it's also going to be the culmination of our second virtual auction. So make sure to check it out. Next slide, please. And I wanted to thank our sponsors for the awards especially Alexandria Real Estate and the Sand Hill Foundation, but also the Carpenters Local numero 217, the Peninsula Clean Energy and Western Allied Mechanical. Next slide, please. And we have even more sponsors and we are really grateful for the support because truly we couldn't bring these programs to you without um, them stepping up and basically supporting our, our mission. So thank you sponsors. Next slide, please. All right, I have a few announcements too. So the April happy hour is going to be around sustainable transportation. And we are fortunate enough that we will have two speakers, maybe even a third speaker. 
but for sure someone from Peninsula Clean Energy and from someone from commute.org. So you can already actually um, sign up and I will add more details as we get the speakers solidified, but here you have the short link, so that's bit.ly. And then uh, the end of the link is SSMC April happy hour. So make sure to sign up. And then, as I mentioned, we do have a virtual awards celebration that's going to happen on May 14th. And you can go on our website and then hit the tab 2021 celebration and you'll learn more about that. Next slide. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, we are not oper operating in vacuum and we love partnership opportunities. So I did want to bring to your attention another event that's actually happening already on April the 2nd, that's a Friday from noon to 1 p.m. And that's going to be uh, with Actira and we actually have 10 plus other organizations that are co-sponsoring the event. That's going to be with Dr. Ali on environment, environmental and social justice. So make sure to, to attend because I think it promises to be a great event. So you have the registration link at the bottom of the slide too, and I will make sure to add it in the, the chat uh, window as well, and also share all this information with you after the happy hour. So you don't you don't need to to write this down all right next slide please and i think with that i'd like to hand it over to megan she is a terrific intern and has worked hard on the trivia so uh, let's get this started megan on to you yes it's trivia time and we're going to test your knowledge of um, sustainability in san mateo county so next slide so if you want to answer, you can hold up fingers, one for A, two for B, and so on. You have your video on, or you can put your guess in the chat. So when was San Mateo County's Office of Sustainability founded? 2008, 2010, 12, 14, or 16. Seeing a variety of guesses um, for, I think we have every answer represented. Um, and in fact, it was founded in 2014, D. All right, next question. So this year on January 26th, the San Mateo County Board of Supervisors adopted the Government Operations Climate Action Plan, which is a comprehensive strategy to address the climate crisis. So when does it say that San Mateo County should reach carbon neutrality? By what year? I'm seeing a lot of B's and A's. Some E's and D's. I think we have everything represented again. And in fact, the answer is B, 2035. So um, we have a lot of work ahead of us. All right, and our last question. So how many pounds of trash were removed during the San Mateo County Environmental Health Services Coastal Cleanup, which took place across four Saturdays in September of 2020? Let's see if you think it's oh, more like uh, an elephant or a sea <laughs> lion. <laughs> yeah, we can pick which sea animal represents. And the answer is unfortunately E, 9,710.46 pounds are about the weight of a killer whale, which I guess it's good that we picked up so much trash, but <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you, Megan. Um, hi, everyone. Um, that was an awesome trivia session. I always learn so much about, you know, um, our topic by 
being surprised at the answer. So thank you, Megan, for sharing. And thank you to the team for such thoughtful trivia questions. Um, before we go into introducing our guests, I just wanted to give a quick overview of the happy hour, the format, if you've never joined us before. Um, it's a pretty informal format and I'll just have everyone kind of introduce themselves and maybe how you found us um, in the chat and then whatever's in your glass. Tonight I'm drinking water with lemon um, as my green drink and yeah like I said this is just supposed to be an informal um, place to chat about sustainability issues, um, have conversations about solutions with people who care um, and who are like-minded this is also just a great opportunity to um, expand your knowledge and, and um, learn about the different initiatives going on in your county. So pretty cool. Um, and with that, I think I'll introduce our first speaker, Oops, Adrienne. So she is the sustainability manager of Brisbane, along with much, much more. I will let her elaborate on her extensive background and um, her certifications, pretty impressive. And for a second, I'm gonna stop sharing and switch to her slides. Thanks, Gianna. Well, while you bring these up, let me just say that I'm really happy to be back at a sustainable San Mateo County event. Um, I know a lot of you folks from my time working with the organization and uh, I'm always glad to see some new faces as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't put my uh, introduction in the chat, but while I am working for the city of Brisbane, I'm actually a resident of Half Moon Bay. So I'm also really excited to hear some updates uh, a little bit later from Veronica on what's happening in the city that I live in as well. Hold on just one moment. All right, Adrian, hey. you're on. Thank you. Go ahead to the next slide, please. So the first um, program that I wanted to highlight for Brisbane is a major initiative that we are deep in the thick of this year uh, called the Brisbane Building Efficiency Program. Um, this is a, a significant program to address the emissions from our existing buildings, specifically the commercial, industrial, and multifamily buildings over 10,000 square feet. We established this program through an, a, a city council ordinance back in late 2019 and it requires um, buildings over 10,000 square feet to begin benchmarking their building and reporting to the city by May of this year. Um, we also have some provisions to go beyond benchmarking as we call it. So in a few years, uh, buildings will either need to demonstrate that they are high performing or start to take steps to improve their energy and water efficiency. Um, it's been a pretty uh, interesting and innovative program, um, you know, iterating on uh, similar programs around the state and around the nation, but really tailoring it to Brisbane. And we are really expecting it to have a significant impact on that big blue wedge of the uh, emissions pie that you see there, which is our commercial, industrial, and direct access sector. Um, as of that inventory, it was uh, 30 percent of our local emissions and we expect to take about a 14 or so percent chunk out of that slice of the pie from this program. Uh, we're also really hoping to help uh, broaden the impact by creating a toolkit so that other local jurisdictions can adopt this program. So it's it's been a really uh, major undertaking that we are glad to have the support from a, a grant by the Air District to uh, move forward. And go ahead to the next slide. Um, so another uh, effort in partnership is to address new buildings. Um, we did this through our REACH codes. Um, Christine mentioned earlier REACH codes are, are basically locally taking the state's building code a little bit further. Our REACH codes focused on new buildings and requirements to make them all electric with very limited exceptions. We also passed really strong EV charging requirements and we continued provisions that we had in previous years 
to require solar on all new facilities and uh, some fire provisions since we do have some fire danger in Brisbane being nestled in San Bruno Mountain Canyons. Next slide. Uh, we are also taking steps to address waste. So just last week, we had our first reading of the disposable foodware ordinance, which the county has adopted and a number of other cities have, have also adopted. And so that was unanimously approved last week and we'll have our second reading uh, in April. I forget the date exactly. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to, you know, really implementing that locally and, and hopefully seeing some reduced litter the picture that you see on the screen at the bottom is actually from our 2018 coastal cleanup day at, out on the bayfront. And um, fortunately, the after picture of this day looked much better than that starting picture. Uh, next slide, please. And then um, finally, we're planning a number of Earth Day events to help build community connections. Um, we always have, um, except for last year, have a Earth Day habitat restoration event. Uh, we're not sure if we're gonna be able to have that again this year. Brisbane has been very conservative as a city with uh, hosting public events. So instead, um, or perhaps in addition, we are gonna be hosting a virtual Climate Jeopardy event uh, Wednesday, April 21st uh, on Zoom on your own couch, bring your own refreshments. Uh, and we'll talk about, um, you know, what is happening in Brisbane with regard to climate and hopefully get some new folks engaged in learning about what we're working on and helping us uh, shape our future efforts. And uh, with that, I think I'm back to just the uh, final closing slide with my contact info. Thanks. Thank you so much, Adrian. That was really quick, um, but hopefully you guys got a lot out of it. I thought the um, the Climate Jeopardy event sounded really, really fun and interesting. So um, I will go ahead and go back to the other slide. Sorry, I'm navigating some screen sharing um, Gianna, difficulties here. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I'm thinking in the meantime, maybe we have time for a few questions, if there are a few. Yeah, definitely. While I set these slides up, feel free to ask, pop your uh, question in the chat. And Do you see that there's a, a question already from Carol Steinfeld? Um, there's an open space and ecology committee in Brisbane. Interesting. Yes, indeed, it is very interesting. Um, they focus on our, our climate and environment initiatives and in particular open space because we are adjacent to San Bruno Mountain and Brisbane set has such a strong history of uh, open space protection and, and really protection of San Bruno Mountain, preserving that as a, an open space and, and eventually county park to uh, keep it open for everybody. So um, they do a lot of work related to habitat and in addition to our climate work. Love it. Really cool. Yeah. Um, anybody Anna? else? Yeah, sorry. I was going to say there are a few other questions if we still have time. Yeah, let so me Ka see. Katrin is asking, um, oh yeah, about the wastewater uh, treatments. Wastewater treatment systems in large buildings. I'm, I'm not sure, Catherine, if I totally understand the question. Um, are, you, are you able to unmute and ask it directly perhaps? Yes, uh, you know, in, in San Francisco, in large multiple use buildings, they have packaged wastewater treatment systems built into the building to handle waste of all sorts. And I'm just wondering if that's something on your horizon. Uh, it is not something we have really uh, discussed at this point. So it's something I guess we'll have to look into. One of the buildings developed by uh, Mid Peninsula housing up in either South City or San Bruno has that on site. It might be interesting for you to see it. Um, and then I saw that um, Alejandra Warren asked about um, Brisbane adopting the county's foodware ordinance. And yes, we are. Uh, we're in the process right now. It was unanimously adopted at its first reading last week, Thursday. So I anticipate we'll be passing it hopefully in April. 
Awesome. I think we might have time for one more question if anybody wants to pop it in the chat or ask it um, by unmuting yourself. I'll give it a try. Hooray, Adrian. Um, I just thought I'd ask you if you feel that Brisbane's either city council or perhaps the open space uh, committee has looked into uh, any housing elements uh, and, and how they might impact uh, climate futures. I know housing is a, a controversial topic all over the peninsula and, and Brisbane is, is no different, but I'd love to learn anything about that from. Well, um, I'm actually in the public works department, so I'm slightly removed some, from some of the direct housing policy going on in our community development department. I do understand that we are um, about to start uh, looking at a housing element update. So I imagine there's going to be, I think there's some meetings planned for the next few uh, months to really start to get community input on that. Um, I know a lot of people, they think of Brisbane's and they think of the, the Baylands development and the housing that will go in there. And um, certainly there's a lot of history there that I won't uh, get myself in trouble by getting into, but um, the, the voters in Brisbane did adopt um, Measure JJ to move that project forward with uh, up to 2,200 units of uh, housing on that site. So, um, you know, the, the project is, you know, we're waiting for a specific plan from the developer at this point in time, and um, there's still a lot of work to be done, but I think there, um, you know, was a majority of uh, Brisbane residents that voted to support moving it forward. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your questions, everybody. We're going to move on to our next lightning speaker, Sigal Michael, and she has been the sustainability coordinator for Burlingame since 2014. So super experienced with this, these sorts of topics, and I'll go ahead and pull up her slides. Sigal, if you want to go ahead and say a few words while I'm doing that, feel free. Sure. Hello. Thank you, everyone, for having me here tonight. Um, you'll see also in my presentation a lot of the different things cities are doing overlap and it's because we're all doing such good work, um, but it really helps uh, the peninsula in general towards sustainability goals. Um, you could go ahead to the next slide. So we too um, adopted reach codes over the summer and reach codes have been a California Bay Area, I'm not sure, you know, phenomena where it started as this wave by some cities and, you know, really went over, um, I think, almost all the cities in um, San Mateo County and Santa Clara and so on of adopting reach codes. And it's been really neat to see this because I recall when we were developing our climate action plan <clears throat> two years ago, we put our consultant told us, you know, advised to put in reach codes. And we said, no way, our building staff would never go for that. And then um, two years later, everyone's going for that. So I have a picture here of our new community center, which is currently under construction. It was, um, our old one was taken down mostly for seismic reasons. And this new one is going to be all electric. It was all electric before we adopted our reach codes, but it's still great now that we have this exemplary building to point to. Um, our reach code includes um, requirements for solar on all new buildings, and, uh, and this building will have solar too. It has requirements for all electric um, appliance use in all new buildings and major re um, renovations. That means um, water heating, space heating, and cooking, but single family homes are able to choose opt for gas cooking still. Um, but ren renovations of um, buildings, including single family homes, large renovations, will need to comply with the all electric requirements too. And we also have requirements for EV stations in um, all new buildings. So it's really exciting. We're um, able, you know, really to hammer down on our emissions from natural gas by look use um, through our reach codes, which we expect to see going down over the next years. And our next target is going to be looking at how to promote electrification in existing buildings. Next slide, please. Oh, 
Unfortunately, my picture didn't show up here, but there was a snazzy picture of a video of an induction cooktop. We are, um, as part of our reach code, we've been really touting the benefits of using induction cooking. And maybe you, like me, talk a lot about induction cooking, but actually have never used it. So we offer an induction cooktop loaner program for residents where they could sign up to take a, um, I'm sorry, the photo's not there, but it's a cooktop plugin that you just put on your countertop, a single cooktop where, um, and we also offer a pan that can be used with it um, for two weeks at a time. And we already have, the program has been going great. We have a wait list for it and been getting really good feedback from people who are just, have always been curious about induction or are interested in renovating their kitchen and want to test it out before they actually make the leap. And um, it's, I think, a really great experience to try it before because they are expensive to try it before you, uh, you know, if you're unsure and the performance of it compared to natural gas, people see for themselves really is above and beyond. Next slide. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If I oh, I guess it, it was animated. Um, and that's a, a video of how do you how you make an egg on induction cooktop. But you, you can move on to the next. We'll one. have to explore that later. I'm sorry. Yeah. That didn't work. No, that's okay. <laughs> and the last thing I wanted to talk about is our EV action plan. It um, hasn't been adopted by our council yet, but we plan to take it to council in the next couple months. And we created a plan focusing on electric vehicles in our city because first it was uh, something we called out that we would do in our climate action plan that we adopted last September, uh, September of 2019. And I felt that we needed to focus on where we wanted to invest in um, electric vehicles. Um, like maybe many cities, I'm getting contacted by EV uh, contractors continually. There's a lot of grants out there. Um, there's just a lot of technology changing and we wanted to be prepared for when grants are available, where we want our EV in, um, stations to go and how to best promote EVs in our city. So for example, in that table, in 2020, we currently have 12 ports. Those aren't stations. So most of our stations have two ports in them. So our city has 12 ports right now. In 2021, um, this year, we have a new big parking garage coming into Burlingame that will almost triple that number to 42 stations. And our 2030 goal is to have at least 100 ports, um, public EV ports available in our city. And the way we're gonna be doing that is prioritizing our EV station locations. We're also participating in a Peninsula Clean Energy project for curbside charging. I want to better uh, install signage that EV stations are available throughout our city. In Burlingame, we're also fortunate that we have a number of auto dealers and I think there's a lot of room for collaboration with them. Um, also, um, due to our, in our Bayshore area where all our hotels are, there's a lot, and our proximity to SFO, there's a lot of elect, uh, car sharing that like to park in our area and we want to put in EV stations to support them and to promote electric car sharing. Last year, we uh, adopted an EV first resolution, which means that our uh, facilities uh, staff will first consider EVs when they need to change out or and turn over the municipal fleet. And right now we have, I think it's already three plug-in hybrids, which are considered EVs in our municipal fleet and are uh, starting to look, um, starting to purchase also landscape equipment in our fleet. So want to continue growing our um, EV um, fleet um, all across and overall just um, also support it for our residents, businesses, and visitors. That's my last slide. I'm happy to take questions or if we wanted to go on to the next speaker. Does anybody have questions for Seagal? Larry? Gianna, I was seeing that, uh, Larry, if you don't mind, I was seeing that David uh, Crabb had a question, does Berlin give 
game code require EV charging in newly planned and constructed buildings? Yes, that's part of our reach code. So now any single family, multifamily or commercial building uh, must have um, EV charging as part of it. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Question? Yeah, so I, can I ask you some questions again? Because this is a, especially during the, as we come out of the pandemic, you've got those four new uh, office buildings up there off of Anza on the Bay Shore, you know, where the old theater used to be. And yet now at high tech companies, people at best will have a hybrid solution, but a lot of companies are going to continue to work at home. So are we going to end up with an imbalance in unused office buildings? I'm just curious about this. Um, very good question. I, I have to admit, I came, I've been thinking the same thing. Um, I don't think we know yet, you know, um, what's, what will happen. Um, we haven't, if you're talking about Rolling Game Point, I think um, that's rented to Facebook. As far as I know, we haven't heard, you know, anything from them. If people will be what their back to work um, policies are going to be, but this is all very new. And um, I think we're all also at the edge of our seat to see what will happen with those buildings. And Robert just had a clarification question. He said EV for all cities is the goal instead of CNG, correct? Yes. Cool. I would just like to add something. This is Rick Bonilla, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. Um, PCE also has a program to help municipalities uh, uh, green their fleet. So they have an incentive program, just like they do for individuals who want to buy an EV uh, to help uh, green the fleet at your city or any city here in the county. Thank you. Excellent, thanks for sharing that. Sure. And Russell also has a question. Does Burlingame have a grant program to retrofit apartments and condos with EV? Uh, we don't have one directly. Um, I think Peninsula Clean Energy may be working on that as well. Um, but part of our policy in um, where we want to locate our EV stations is to, to our best, try and make them located near um, our downtown areas where, that also have pretty high density of multifamily buildings and they're old multifamily buildings, which make it harder to install EV stations. So for example, the new parking garage that's going in downtown Burlingame is sort of on the outskirts of downtown and um, right bordering where we have residential multifamily. So um, I'll definitely be, as soon as they're installed, be putting flyers out to all those buildings to make sure they know that now they have really easy access um, to overnight and daytime charging in the parking lot. I'd like to add that PCE does have a program to help uh, apartments uh, 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 to install charging uh, facilities. So we have actually in cooperation with the state CEC $24 million program for that. That sounds Thank awesome. You. Any more questions? I think we're cutting it a little close on time. Um, so if you have any other questions, just put them in the chat for later. Um, I'm gonna pull up Veronica's slides here and also give her a quick intro. I feel like I'm um, playing musical, musical slides here. <laughs> One second, everybody. Appreciate your patience. All right, so next we have Veronica, who's worked as the sustainability analyst for the city of Half Moon Bay since January 2020, and she has a slide deck for us as well, a lightning speech. I'll let her elaborate on what she's been focusing on herself. Um, Veronica, do you want to say a few words real quick? Sure. I mean, I basically what I wrote in my bio is in my slide deck, so in the interest of time, I can just <laughs> go right in. Um, but hi everyone, I'm Veronica Bostonak, uh, the Sustainability Analyst for the City of Half Moon Bay. I've been there um, since January and I'm excited to tell you a little bit um, about what's happening on the coast side in Half Moon Bay. Uh, next slide. 
So first, I wanted to let you all know that we're in the process of drafting our very first climate action adaptation plan. Uh, we don't currently have one. Um, public outreach has really been um, surrounding this entire process, including a pilot project um, that we did in the winter of 2019 focused on um, traditionally underrepresented communities. We uh, did some more outreach last year and are planning to do some again this summer. Uh, once we have a draft available, we're expecting to have our draft plan available in June or July. And we're also excited to announce uh, we are going to be launching a Loteria style game for um, education and awareness of climate action and adaptation issues. Um, I think that this is actually the first time that I've publicly shared uh, one of the cards. So <laughs> consider yourselves lucky you get a little sneak peek. Um, we're excited to launch that game on Earth Day and we're expected to have um, an, uh, the plan adopted by the end of this year. So if you're interested in attending some of our outreach events, uh, I have a link to our CAP page up here on the um, slide. Next slide. Uh, so along those lines, just like Brisbane and Burlingame, we are focused on building electrification and uh, moving away from natural gas. Uh, we have not yet passed a REACH code, but we did a study session with our city council in February. Um, at that study session, we were directed to draft a ordinance to move to all electric for new construction and lay out a plan to phase out natural gas in existing buildings. Uh, so we're expecting to have a draft of that ordinance available in May and we'll be um, ha we'll be doing outreach events with the public before bringing it to city council in September. So if you're interested in getting involved and you're interested in um, knowing about how to move away from natural gas or um, if you live or work on the coast uh, or in Half Moon Bay, we're interested in hearing from you. We really want to get a good idea of what it means to make that change in Half Moon Bay. Uh, ne next slide. Uh, and last, again, just like um, my other cities, we have adopted the county's model disposable foodware ordinance. Uh, we went uh, a little bit farther on a couple provisions. We're requiring that accessories like utensils and uh, condiment packets be distributed by request only. Uh, and we're also uh, encouraging reusables, especially for dine-in. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about more about reusables on the next slide. Um, but I also wanna mention that the city of Half Moon Bay will be the first city in uh, San Mateo County to uh, have this ordinance go into effect. So we're, uh, starting this ordinance in July of 2021, which is about eight months sooner than the county and some other jurisdictions. So um, this is really, uh, Half Moon Bay is uh, a little bit of a guinea pig in, <laughs> in that sense, but we're excited, uh, especially with our proximity to the coast and um, the increase of a litter from takeout that we've been seeing. It's really important that we have this ordinance in effect sooner rather than later. Uh, I do have, again, a link to the uh, disposable foodware ordinance and some information on this slide as well. And if you're interested in reusables in general, I wanted to take this opportunity to plug another program on the next slide. Uh, so we have, uh, we've been working with Circular SMC and Circular SMC is working around the county to try to find some areas to um, establish reusable takeout container pilots. So really getting at that takeout <laughs> problem that we've only seen so much more of during COVID. Um, I've been working with Circular SMC. We're looking at working with dispatch and connecting with some restaurants. Um, but we're also looking for interested residents that um, wa might want to participate in this program. It's important that we show the restaurants that we have a community that's very supportive of this. So if you're interested, um, I'm going to put a link to a survey. Uh, we can get your information, your general thoughts on this sort of system. Uh, this is expanded a little bit beyond Half Moon Bay. So we're thinking Montera down through Half Moon Bay. Um, and I'll put a link in the chat once I'm done with this presentation. And um, Alejandra Warren, who I've seen is on today, she's the, the main contact. So if you have any questions about um, this program, she's a good contact for you as well. Next slide. 
Um, so this is just my, my last slide. I uh, wanted to plug our newsletter. We started a new sustainability themed newsletter in summer of last year called Sustainability Source. Uh, so if you want to keep up to date with the city's efforts um, and make sure that you're, you know when we have outreach events in the future, uh, signing up for that newsletter is a really great way to do that. So um, if you go to hmbcity.com slash sustainability, a little pop up will come up and you can put in your um, information so we can have you on that list and then you can also access all of those links that I had on the slides ahead of time. So if you have any questions, I'm here. <laughs> Go ahead and I'm going to pop into the chat real quick. And I'll put the link to that survey there as well. Let's see, Adam's asking, will those be for this code cycle or the next? Um, so they will be for this code cycle, um, unless the readings take <laughs> long, long, but I, I, we're expecting it to go in this, in this code cycle. Cool. All right, we have a couple more in here. I know we got to get into our breakout room, so I'm going to lightning flash to the next talk after this yeah. last question. Larry asked, um, hopefully the HMB McDonald's is on board. <laughs> well, all the restaurants, not just McDonald's. But it, it... The McDonald's actually were one of the first restaurants to reach out to me asking for a list of, uh, a, a list of acceptable items. So they're working towards it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then one more question. It's clear to me that the city of San Bruno, which is my home, needs a sustainability employee. Curious if your roles are grant funded. How long each of your respective cities has had a sustainability focused employee on staff? This sounds like a question for everybody on the panel. So I can answer for Half Moon Bay. Um, so the city of Half Moon Bay has establishes five city council priorities every year. And in 2019, they established um, sustainability as one of those priorities and that's um, why they brought me on and I believe that my position is funded um, through our solid waste franchise agreement. Anybody else want to pop in and, and inform on this question? Sure. Um, I've, I'm the city's first in Burlingame, the city's first sustainability coordinator. I think I said since 2014 and basically our um, Citizens Environmental Council, which is our community volunteer um, advocacy group, really pushed the city to hire a sustainability coordinator and, and they agreed to do so. And it was in their climate action plan, their, their original climate action plan to do so. Um, and Brisbane has had a sustainability uh, coordinator for a while. I'm not sure exactly when it was part time uh, originally. And then I was hired on in a full time position in late 2017. Um, and it's paid out of our general funds, um, like most staff positions, I believe. Very cool. All right, we got to jump into our last lightning discussion before we go into our um, breakout rooms. Um, the last speaker that we have, her name is Denise Lynn, and she is a sustainability coordinator at the County of San Mateo Office of Sustainability. So she's going to be talking to us a little bit about the programs there. And while I queue up her slides, Denise, feel free to um, give everybody a shout. Yeah, great. I'm happy to be here. Um, great to see everyone's faces. Again, my name is Denise and I'm a sustainability coordinator with the County of San Mateo. And I know that we've mentioned different programs today. So um, there's lots of folks in my office who work on a lot of different topics from waste and government operations. So feel free to reach out to me and I can get you connected with the right person. Um, today, my presentation will focus on saving energy and improving health and comfort at home or in um, your business if you're a business owner or no one. So um, here we go. Um, next slide, please. We have an exciting Earth Day webinar coming up on that, the holiday, um, April 22nd, and this will be focusing on the Bayren program, which is the program that I spend most of my time on. 
It is a collaboration between the nine Bay Area um, counties that provides energy saving um, programs and resources for residents, property owners, municipalities, and businesses. Um, but this webinar is focused on home energy use. So um, please sign up for this webinar that will be um, everything you should know about home energy in 30 minutes. And it'll, it will include a quick presentation on ways to lower your energy bill and make your home more comfortable and healthy. Um, and then there'll be breakout rooms where you can choose a topic of your choice from um, like energy rates. So like time of use rates, like what are those and how do those you know, affect me um, to there's, there'll be a breakout room for learning about rebates if you're ready to get going on a home project. Um, there'll also be one on renewables and how to mesh that with your energy upgrades. So the um, link is right there um, on the slide and I know that the presentations will be shared afterward. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Great. Um, and if you want to just learn directly about the program yourself or you have a conflict with the event, you can also visit the website on the right hand lower corner, bayrenresidential.org and learn about some of the different offerings through Bayren, um, whether it be a free energy efficiency kit that you can get, um, you know, assistance with a home energy advisor for a free consultation, or again, if you want to do home projects that involve insulation, duct sealing, and also a bunch of great rebates that have recently been made available for electric appliances to switch away from methane gas. Next slide, please. And then here's a, another program that's not barren, but it's a wonderful program um, offered through um, our libraries in San Mateo County. So I did wanted to give it a shout out. And this is the Home Energy and Water Saving Toolkit. So this includes not only energy saving measures, but also water saving measures and just is you know, pretty comprehensive and even has weather stripping to go around your doors and windows to block, in, block out that air and help to insulate your home better. So it's just really an excellent way to um, have fun and learn more about your home's energy and water use and have direct things that you can install in your home. And that can be checked out and actually put on hold like a book. So if you go to tinyurl.com slash SMC library toolkit, you can see um, how to place a hold for the toolkit. Next slide, please. Lastly, I wanted to give a plug for our Small Business Resource Center. And um, this is a package of different programs that um, we, we are um, using to support small to medium-sized businesses in San Mateo County who are looking to save energy and water, reduce waste and prevent pollution. Um, so if you go to that website, you'll see that there are a you know, there's a wealth of resources from our green business certification program to um, loans available for upgrades within businesses and um, composting and recycling programs. And my colleague, Al Alexandria Galizioli, um, works on that program. So you can also email her directly as well. Next slide, please. And I believe the probably the last slide is just the um, the question slide. So maybe I'll just look in the chat and if we need to move forward, that's okay too. Um, I'm seeing from Terry Nagel which libraries offer the toolkit in SMC. So it's all of the um, libraries besides one, I think. So most of them do offer them both through the San Mateo County library system and also in the, um, in the city specific libraries as well. Um, and yeah, induction cooktops. And I was so excited to see Berlin Games program. So Sigal, I'll be reaching out to you to learn more about that. But um, it's definitely been a huge area of interest, but we just um, haven't kind of stood it up yet. And you know, it's been definitely been an area of interest. And regardless, we are trying to share learnings on induction cooktops and just offering more opportunities um, through, at least through, you know, through our webinars. Um, but that's, thank you again for bringing that up for the loaner idea. All right. Great. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else before we move on? I know we have a lot to discuss in our groups and or as a group, I should say. I don't think we'll do breakout rooms um, this evening as we are running low on time. As usual, there's so much to learn and talk about. So I'm just going to pop the questions in the chat real quick and we can all go from there. 
Hey, Gianna, I already put them in the, oh. the chat. So there we go. I'll pop them in there again. I think they got lost after the last conversation that we had. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any um, anything to say about any of these questions in the chat, feel free. I think we'll just start with the first one. What are th the top three sustainability areas you think are important for your city? We've got enhanced reach codes. And feel free, this is, a, this is the open discussion part. So in case, um, in case you aren't familiar with the format, usually we break out into smaller groups to discuss, but we're just one big group today. Um, so we can comment? Yep, definitely. Well, uh, I'm Rick Bonilla, I'm from San Mateo, member of the city council. There's certainly, I think the biggest thing that we have to deal with is housing. Uh, if we wish to tackle uh, climate challenges really effectively, one of the largest emitters of greenhouse gas emissions comes from the built environment. And so we need to get much more efficient uh, and we need to have taller and denser, newer buildings with uh, uh, better efficiency. Uh, some of the old built stock uh, that's existing at one story could be replaced with a much more usable three, four, five, six, seven story building that may have actually equal emissions and contain 100 or more living units in there with retail uses on the ground. Uh, that would feed into improving transportation because when you build uh, 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 residences, uh, when you build in the need for transportation, then the transportation's improvements follow. And following, I would say equity. And when I say equity, I mean everything in the sense that everybody's been talking about, but also uh, in terms of uh, uh, economic justice for people who go to work every day and make, in my city, $15 an hour is the minimum wage. And nobody can live on $15 an hour. It's a complete injustice. Um, I've actually uh, been thinking and talking and making it known that I believe we need to start a new push for an increased minimum wage uh, because $15 is so 2015. <laughs> and we've moved way beyond that. And I believe we need to shoot for $30 an hour. Um, and I know that's a high bar. It sounds crazy to some people, but if you really do some calculations, it makes sense. So thank you. Has it been explained what a reach code is? People are talking about, I have no idea what you're talking about. I could help with that. A REACH code basically means that um, all buildings need to comply with um, the California Building Code and a REACH code reaches beyond the California Building Code to have more strict requirements for energy efficiency. So all these cities are doing going beyond the California Building Code to adopt things for solar, building electrification for energy efficiency and EV um, stations. Hope that helps. There's some comments in the chat. Um, if we go to electric blowers, will they be quieter? <laughs> they are quieter actually, um, because they don't have as loud engines. I mean, they don't solve the problem completely. It still blows particulate matter all over the place, but they are quieter. Definitely. definitely. Um, there's another comment here about illegal dumping from construction sites and landscapers. Um, there's a need for better signage against dumping and more cameras installed. <laughs> Why can't the PD send tickets the same way we do for red light violators? Oh boy. <laughs> I don't Actually, know. a lot of dumping and I sometimes spot the dumpers and the San Mateo police do go after them when I give them information to go on. Thanks. All right, shall we move on to the next question? I know we're definitely getting low on time. So if you have to jump, that's totally okay. Um, but usually we like to stick around and talk a little bit more after um, 6.30 has passed. So feel free. Um, how do you usually get your information about your city's sustainability events and efforts? Uh, social media, which ones? word of mouth, flyers, radio, et cetera. You can put your questions, comments in the chat or just um, speak up, we'd love to hear. Yeah, I'm, after the meeting, I'm gonna sign up, Veronica, for your newsletter, that's really cool. 
Awesome. <laughs> We've got a Berkeley Public Library uh, tool lending library link here. We've also got city websites. Yeah, for Burlingame, I, I'll plug in that you should sign up for our e-news. That's the best source for sustainability related events in our city. We similarly in Brisbane have a weekly um, city manager news uh, blast that goes out uh, email on Friday afternoon and that's where all our sustainability news and then some uh, goes out. We have a bunch of social media accounts too, um, Facebook, Instagram, I think we have Twitter, uh, next door, we try to hit all of them. Yeah, I get a lot of information from social media as well. I follow a lot of the local uh, like accounts and local cities. Um, some That's interesting so initiatives you can find on there. So follow, I think it's Burlingame, Sustain, Sustain, Burlingame Sustainability is another, our Instagram account. Awesome, awesome. Um, we need to get a little uh, social media tree going on here. Yeah, that would <laughs> actually be a great resource. Yeah, there. definitely, definitely. All right, for the last question, let me get up there. I'm having trouble finding now, there's so many chats. All right, <laughs> if you had a magic wand, what wild ideas would solve the transportation issues in SMC? Think outside the box and be outrageous. So get creative. I'm share my outrageous suggestion because I share it anytime I can. As a Half Moon Bay resident, I'm waiting till some billionaire decides they're done with traffic on 92 and builds us a gondola system in the 92 <laughs> corridor. Please, yes. <laughs> Maybe it'll block yeah, somebody else thing. brought that up yesterday to me and I immediately thought of you. <laughs> so I'm making a movement. <laughs> We're just like a monorail like they have in Disneyland that goes over top of everything. I don't know. I vote for that one. That's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> Wishful thinking, but not too far off. I mean, I was talking to Christine about it before we started this call, and I was like, there's so much money in the peninsula. Like, there's so many resources. There's a lot of creativity and innovation. And if that could be, if even half of that could be applied to sustainability measures, it would be a game changer. So super cool to hear everybody's ideas. Bike and scooter share along all peninsula cow train stops turn mediums medians between directions on freeways and boulevards into streetcars convince high-speed rail to use the electrified caltrain bullet train and stop holding back housing we approved to build in millbrae hovercraft <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah i love the monorail idea that's awesome more county and state support for more economically fragile communities like San Bruno. School districts do a better job of educating youth and homeowners on separating compost, reducing single use plastics, teach the kids. Yeah, for sure. Get the youth involved. That also, that always helps. I know we're going to have a, a bunch of people dropping off at 630. So if anybody, um, before you guys all hop off, I just want to say thank you on behalf of Sustainable San Mateo County. This was awesome um, to meet all of you sustainability leaders um, locally and just hear the impacts you're making. It's really, really cool. Anybody thank else you. have any parting words? It's great to see such a good turnout. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you all so, so much. We really appreciate you joining and um, make sure to visit our website to subscribe to our newsletter, SSMC. And we look forward to seeing you on our next happy hour. <laughs> yes, and I mean, don't forget, so we have a few upcoming events. So starting with uh, April the 2nd, Dr. Ali on social and environmental justice. So that promises to be a very um, impactful event with our partner, Actera, and 10 plus other organizations that are co-sponsoring this event. And then we hope to see you on April the 15th for our next happy hour. And of course, don't forget on May 14th, we have our big uh, award mm -hmm. celebration. Actually, Rick, who is on this call, is one of our award winners. So congratulations um, again, Rick, for your many, many achievements. And, thank you very much. Uh, 
yeah so uh just stay connected drop me a line if you want to get involved uh if you want to join our team we are always looking for more help and it's fun i think we have some great programs um you know we can use your help and if you want to make a difference i mean that's the right place to to be so let us know and i think with that uh let's just wrap it up and see you in april thanks Bye, thanks for thank you. have a good night have a Bye -bye. good night